welcome everyone for this uh, new session, uh, coding on the XRP ledger. So this one will be uh, more technical, so uh, we'll like code during this session. Um, nothing is mandatory, so if you prefer to watch, you can watch, of course, but uh, I really encourage you to, uh, to code because that's the way you learn. You make mistakes, you learn from those mistakes, and you, you progress. So quick, uh, quickly, so again, so my name is uh, Florent Uzio. Uh, I've been at Ripple for more than five years now, and uh, so I'm an engineer at Ripple. I've been working on, uh, on CBDC solutions for the last two years, and I've been majoritarily working with uh, JavaScript. So as far as I understood, um, some of you, many of you are, seem to be familiar with JavaScript, TypeScript. Let me know if, uh, if not. Are some people really uncomfortable with, with JavaScript? Yeah, okay. All right, okay, great. That's great. Uh, so before, before we start, I really wanted to, uh, to show you the goal of this, uh, this session. That's what you're seeing right now is the mainnet uh, XRP ledger running. And those blocks that you see here are the ledgers, so that Marco described earlier. And you can see that a new ledger is created every three, four seconds. So that's the time it takes for a transaction to be validated. Okay, so if you make a payment, for example, uh, in three, four seconds, the beneficiary will receive that money. And so what you see here, so each ledger has like a sequence number, okay, so 61, 62, 63, etc. So that's like a, a number which is increasing every three, four seconds. And the goal of that session here is for you to create a little blue dot or green dot inside a ledger, okay? That's the goal. And what is, um, so a blue dot, I think, yeah, sorry, a green dot. A green dot is a payment. So I want you to create a green uh, triangle, actually, in, uh, in a ledger. And I feel, uh, I hope that you will be proud of this uh, after that session, uh, that you will feel joy and that you really will understand better how the, the SDKs work and how to interact with the, with the XRP ledger. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, the LiveNet, so LiveNet.XRPL.org. Today we'll work on another uh, network, which is the TestNet. So on the top left, you have like a drop down which allows you to switch the networks, okay? So you will see the same thing here. We'll have ledgers um, being validated, okay? Uh, the, the, the only difference, I think, is that there, is, there are less uh, transactions in, uh, in a ledger because less people use the, the testnet, right? So if we see here, we have just one transaction, like a few. So this is where the green triangle will appear for us, all right? Any question regarding the goal? Cool. So quickly, the content of that session. Uh, so first, I'm going to uh, tell you about the tools and the ID that uh, I used and I suggest you to use as well. Second one, I will introduce you the SDKs. Third point is we are going to set up the project together and that's where GitHub will be needed, for example. Fourth one will be really the core of the session. That's where we're gonna code. So we are gonna create a wallet. We're gonna create a client using the library. We are gonna create a payment. And we'll see if we have time to do other things as well, time allowing. Um, yeah, so let's start. So for the tools, we are going to use JavaScript. So we'll need a node. Okay, so I've used node 16. So first question is, do you have Node installed on your machine? Who, who doesn't have Node? So two people. Okay, so um, we can take like two minutes for you to, to install Node. Uh, you will go to, uh, you type Node on Google and you should find the, the link easily and you can install version 18. I suppose that that should work fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, Marco here is more familiar with Python, so he can also help you. Or you can try to follow as well uh, if you want, if you're interested uh, to, to learn JavaScript. Uh, that, that session is really meant to be as simple as possible for you, oops, for you to grasp really um, how to start from scratch. So it's really up to you. I mean, we can go very slow 
you know, and if you have any difficulties, uh, you can tell me and I can come to you and, uh, and help you. So and do you have Node installed? You have Node? Okay, all right. All right, so um, let's do it because I've, I've, uh, I've created a project for you, so that should be fine, I hope. And again, Marco can also help you. So you all have Node. Do you want to install Node or? You'll, we can wait really two minutes. Because, you sure? Yeah? All right. So next, next thing is Visual Studio Code. Okay, that's the ID uh, that I use. Do you all have it? Are you familiar with it? All good? Yes? Great. All right, and the uh, last one that we'll use is the Explorer that I just showed you before, so with all the blocks, uh, the ledgers, sorry. And this is where we can check the accounts, we can check the, the transactions that we submit to the ledger, okay? So those are the tools that we'll use. So if, everything, if everyone is okay with that, we can go to the next step. The SDK, so as Marco mentioned, so Ripple is contributing to the creation of, uh, of several SDKs that allow to interact with the XRP ledger more easily. And we have three of them, so JavaScript, which is called XRPL.js, Python, XRPLPy, and Java, XRPL4j. So all of them are under the XRPL Foundation uh, GitHub. And so you can find the XRPL.js under this link, so github.com slash XRPLF slash XRPL.js. So we'll, we'll install it. Uh, actually, I've prepared like a project for you, so we'll just need to run NPMI, but I wanted to mention those, uh, those tools that, uh, that you can use, all right? So for you, if you're more familiar with Python, you can use the Python one later. So setting up the project now. So I, I didn't want to really, I didn't want you to install like, um, to, to, to start like an NPM project, you know, to have the package.json, et cetera. So I've created like um, a starter kit for you. So please go to uh, this, this address. Actually, I can send you an email as well to the group, group address. Give me one minute if I find. Yeah, you, you, you have it? I can send it anyway, but. So tell me when you're on my, my repo, if you have any issues to access it. Everything okay? You have it? So just, uh, I think it's good to, to fork it. Okay. And once you, you forked it, you can create a new branch. Let's say, for example, day one. Tell me, everything is okay? Yeah. You got it? Everyone got it? You, you can then clone it into your uh, laptop. Okay, so you can work locally. I'm gonna wait like a few minutes because I see some people are still uh, forking it, so let's wait. All right, so then if you use uh, Visual Studio Code, you should be able to see the starter project, okay, in the source directory. I'm gonna make it bigger. Is that okay? Do you see clearly there? Yep. All right. So everyone is okay? Everyone, uh, everyone has downloaded it? All fine? Okay, so I can move on to the, to the next step. So just to quickly give you uh, some information uh, about it, that I use Turbo Repo to, uh, to create that, uh, that repo, okay? So that allow, allows you to have like a mono repo uh, structure and there you can have different applications and different packages. So that's great if you want to create, for example, design systems or if you want to create a back end and a front end. Uh, so if you haven't tried it, I really encourage you to, to try. It's a very cool tool. Um, and it's for JavaScript TypeScript projects. So once you're there, uh, so open your terminal or open the terminal in, in VS Code. Okay, and then run NPMI. And tell me when everything is done. You should have all the dependencies installed. I can do that as well in my terminal to, let, to show you how it looks like. I can make it bigger. I have everything installed already, so NPM should just tell me that all the packages are up to date. 
You see? There. All good? Do you have it? Do you have the dependencies installed? So basically, Turbo Repo will install all the dependencies of all the applications or packages that it sees, um, it sees there. Okay? Uh, so then, what we need to do is you CD into the apps directory and the start, starter project. Sorry, that's, there is a little mistake here. Starter and not started. Okay? In your terminal. Is, every, is everyone ready? Yeah. Sorry? Still building. Still building? Ah, okay. All right. Start, yeah, then you go into the starter. Yeah, starter project. So you build first, you NPMI. Is everything okay, David? Yeah, it's a typo. Yeah, I can, I can, I can change that quickly. Oh. Yes, so starter project. You run NPMI, everyone is okay. <laughs> All good? You have it? Yeah, I'm still building. Ah, it's still building? Okay, so we can wait like a, a a few seconds. It's okay. We are not. Uh, we are not rushing. Yeah. All right. So then, so once you have this, so you CD into apps starter project. I created like a start script. Okay, so that will allow you to to run the project. And when you run npm start, you should have the output. It works because in the main function that there is a console log. And it works. So if you have this, all good. Tell me if someone doesn't have that, uh, that message. Seems good, then uh, that's great. Everyone has that message. Yeah? Okay. And you, David, uh, yeah. you're good? All right. Great. Okay, then, so I'm going to um, talk about the, the structure of the files that I've already created or that we will create together in this, uh, in this project. And I want to emphasize that this is my way. I think this is a, a nice way for you to really understand how to differentiate the different files and the different functionalities of the, of the project. But you can uh, change it yourself. I mean, you can do it differently in the future. I mean, it's really up to you then to, to do as you want. So the core sort of of the application is index.ts and this is where we will call the different functions like for example to send a payment uh, to create a trust line etc uh, so the the start script in package.json will run this index.ts file okay and i'm using uh, a library called ts node which allows us to to run ts files directly all right so that's the core. This is where we'll write the, the function. I mean, where we'll call the function, sorry. The index.ts will depend on the file called wallet.ts. This is where we'll create the wallets that uh, well, will contain the accounts. Okay, we'll have the public addresses, the secret key, um, and we'll see how to create that in a minute. That wallet file, we will use a .end file. Okay, so this is where we'll store the secret key. And I think that's a nice thing to do because then you can have multiple secret key in that dot and file. Uh, depending on the exercises that we'll do later, you know, you can create multiple uh, accounts and it's, it's, gonna, it's not going to be published to, to GitHub, okay, because it's in the dot git ignore. So, but of course, you can also hard code like the, the secret key inside wallet.ts if you want. That's uh, up to you. And because it's like on testnet, it's, it's okay but you would never do that for like a production application, right? Another important file is the client, xrpl-client. So this is where we'll use the JavaScript SDK to create a new client uh, using WebSockets and to connect to the testnet uh, network, all right? That we'll also see in a, few, in a few minutes how we can do that. But we will use this file, xrpl-clients, in both I mean, in index.ts, okay, that's where we'll connect and disconnect from the client. But also in all the um, transactions files that, uh, that is in the transaction directory, which is currently empty in the, the starter project that I created. So for example, we'll create a payment.ts 
and we'll use the client to, for example, submit the transaction to the ledger. Two other files that are, in my view, also very important that I created for you, and uh, I've included already some types or some helper functions, so we don't have to sort of uh, spend time on creating them. One is model.ts, and that contains a type called transaction options, okay? And we'll go, uh, I'll explain that a little bit later. That models will be used in all the files inside the transactions uh, directory. Um, and we'll, get, uh, we'll, we'll go into, into that a bit later. And another file is helpers.ts. This is where we'll have different functions that uh, allow you to manipulate, for example, the amounts, to convert a currency. Um, we can also create a helper that sign a transaction by itself. And we can create any other helper or util function that we want. And of course, that helpers file will be uh, used by all the transactions uh, files that yes. Do you have any questions about this? So if I go to my code here, you can see what I've been talking about. We have the index.ts here, which contains the, the main function. This is where we'll call send payment, create trust line, create NFT, et cetera. Uh, throughout the, the two days. We have the wallet.ts where we'll create the, the wallets via the SDK and the .n file. The XRPL client, transaction models, and helpers. Okay. Here we have the .m.example, so that one will be committed to GitHub. And I've just included the way how to, I mean, some examples how to, to write uh, what we are going to use then in the wallet.ts file. Okay, this is where we'll write the seeds, the private keys. Tell me if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast or too slow, or, all right? Uh, no problem at all. So the first thing we'll do uh, is creating the wallet, okay? So if you start with another blockchain as well, you need accounts. So to start with the XRP ledger, we'll use what we call a faucet. Okay, the faucet, and that exists also with other blockchains. So to create a faucet, let's go to the URL that I wrote here. And by the way, I've also included some links in the readme. So if you go to the readme, you will find some useful links here. So the, the explorer, the first one is here. We have the faucet here and others. So use the faucet here. And when you click on the link, you will arrive to, oops, on that page. Is that big enough? It's okay? Okay, so that's like a very important page that you will use a lot uh, during your, your development, okay? So you have the choice to, with different networks, testnet, devnet, AMM devnet, and potentially others will appear in the future. But testnet is a, a real copy of mainnet. So whatever you do, I think you will use testnet, except if you want to test something very specific, which is in development, such as AMM. AMM, in that case, you would choose another network. When we were developing, for example, uh, NFT functionalities, we had another NFT devnet uh, network. Okay? So you'll use that a lot. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a wallet, an account here, and we'll get some credentials. So you click on the button, generate credentials. In a few seconds, you get your credentials and we have different, um, different information here. The address, which always starts by an R, that's the public address that you can share with anyone in the world. You have the secret, starting usually with an S, always with an S, and that's the one you don't want to share with anyone. You keep it for you, all right? We, the faucet gives you 10,000 XRP at the, at the beginning, and this is more than enough to do whatever you want on the XRP ledger, because we'll see that the transactions are very cheap. And we have a sequence number, so this is uh, a way to sort of order the transactions on the ledger. This one is less important at the moment, so we'll really use the address and the secret key. Okay, so what I want you to do is let's create two accounts for now. So copy the secret, so create, no, let's first 
create a .n file by copying the dot example. All right, so you will enter the seed here. So let's copy the secret that we generated on the test on the faucet. And what I like to do is also I like to copy the public address uh, as a comment above the seed. So then I can easily go to an explorer and check the, the address in case I don't remember. I mean, I don't know the public address of that seed. So you create one, then you create a second one and you copy it in the end file. So you just click again on the testnet credential, generate testnet credentials button. And we'll get a new account. Same thing, you copy the secret and you pass it into your .env file. And I like to copy again the public address as a comment. Is everyone okay with that? You just have to create a .env file? Yes, create a .env file. Yes, exactly, yeah, yeah. And for now, we'll just need two, actually. We'll just need one and two. So you can also ignore the, the three and four. So in the meantime, what I want to show you is that because we created that account on the faucet, if we go to the Explorer, we go to the one that I showed you on testnet, if I type the public address, I see it uh, appearing with a, with a balance there, okay? So we see the balance 10,000 XRP. We see the initial payment, the funding of 10,000 XRP. I can go into that transaction to see some more detail. I can see the originator, I can see the destination, you know, I can see many information about, about that transaction. And same thing also for the, the second account. So it will be created with 10,000 XRP. All right. Let me go back to the slides. All right, so once, once we have that, we'll create the wallet. Next thing we'll do is the, the wallet creation. And maybe some of you have already started to, to do it. So we'll use the .env file to import the seed and then to create the wallet from the seed using the SDK. So let me go to the, the file there, Doo -doo -doo. wallet. So there is a to-do here. So we're going to import .env first. And then we'll have that was yeah the wallet, so we'll take the wallet. Then we'll create so the the constant, so wallet one seed, and we'll use the dot end for that. And we'll do the same thing, we'll do like a, a wallet to seed. And we import from the on wallet to seed, okay? So there, there, this is where we use the, the SDK, so the wallet one, and that's the wallet from the SDK. Okay, so the wallet export lag has a few functions and we'll need to use the from seed. And this is the seed that we'll use just here. All right, from the .env file. But you can create, you can create a wallet from, from other... Yes, yes, you can, you can. So you can see in the function here, you can have from an entropy, from mnemonic, from a secret. So you have different possibility to create a wallet. And this, in this example, so we use the seed that we created with the, with the faucet, okay? And it's actually, it's, um, it's really the same, to be honest, for this one. It's, uh, we call secret seed the, the same thing. So everyone has this. So I, I want to show you what kind of object you, you get when you do that wallet.from seed. So I'm going to use a tool called run.js, which is a really cool tool if you want to do some quick testing with uh, JavaScript. So I'm just going to take the seed. Give me a minute. So I'm going to take a seed here. I don't know if you see very well. Yeah. 
So basically, we'll create a, a wallet, a wallet object, which looks like this. So we'll have the public key, we'll have the private key, the public address, starting with an R, and the seed. So that's in the, in the back uh, what we do uh, with, within the wallet.ts. So then we'll be able to access the address, for example, when we'll do uh, later the transaction. Is everything okay with that? Are we going well? I mean, not too fast. Uh, what was the tool you were using? Uh, Run.js. Run Run yeah. I can show you. Run.js. It's a yeah. JavaScript playground. Really cool. Thank you. So you have like um, a free version, the paid version. In the paid version, you can install packages. It's uh, very, very useful. All right, so let me check. So the time, yeah. All right, so next step, once the wallets are done, everything is okay with the wallet? Yeah, all good. So then we'll create the client. So the client sampling will use the, the SDK for that. Let me put myself in a in full, full screen. All right, so let's go to xrplclient.ts. All right. And there we'll export like a function uh, get, get client, for example. And that's a narrow, a narrow function. First, before that, we'll initiate like a, a let variable we'll, that we'll call client. And that will be of type client. The type client will be imported from the XRPL library. All good so far? Yep. So we'll export that function, get client, and we'll then use it in the different files like the index.ts and uh, all the transactions files uh, like payment, NFT, etc. Okay, so something easily we can do if that we can check if we don't have the client, then we'll initiate a new client. So we'll assign client equal client and in there, new client. So in there, we'll need the address, I mean, the, the URL of the, the network, okay? So that will be a WebSocket. So to do that, you can go to a website that I also included in the README, which is, uh, let me show you, let me go to the README, the public servers, this one in the README, okay? So let's go to the README there, and we'll have all the URLs for the different networks or servers that we want to target. So we have the main net at the top. We have three actually. Some of them are like a full history node. Some of them are just like, like a few amount of ledgers. So that's also what Marco was mentioning. I can't remember if the S1 or S2 is the, the full history. I think it's mentioned below. But full history is that you will have all the transactions of the last 10, 12 years that the uh, XRP ledger exists. Okay, so you'll be able to query a transaction that was done six years ago. If you are connecting to a, a network which is only containing, let's say, 300 ledgers, that means that you will have access to the transactions that happened for the last 10 days, something like that. I don't know, we need to calculate to 300 times four in seconds. Okay, so it depends your need. And if you connect to, uh, a ledger, uh, um, a network which has only 300, and if you want to query a transaction which, was, which happened five years ago, that will not work. It will not be found, okay? So here, uh, let's, we'll use ex ex for this exercise the testnet, and we'll use the WebSocket, so this address here. And there is the port as well, which is a bit uh, hidden here, so we need to, to take it, so let's take this one. What I did as well in my, in my presentation here is that we'll see is that I created a, a networks object where you can type like a key value pair, which will be then easier to, to use in your client, in your object instanci instantiation. Okay, so we can, do, we can do that as well. Let's create this constant networks and we'll say ripple testnet. Oops, okay. And in there, so in the client, we can use the networks ripple testnet. 
Okay? So when we use, when we'll start the application, if there is no client, we'll instantiate a new one. That's when we call the first function typically. If we want to call multiple functions one after the other, then we don't need to reinstantiate a new object because then the client will be defined here. And in that case, we need to return the client directly. All right, so function to get the client. So if first time running the application, instantiate new client, otherwise return existing object. All good? Tell me if you have any questions. Sorry. Oh yeah. But yeah, yeah, return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I either I instantiate it or I, I don't. Mm -hmm. All good. So, um, well, I can return it as well. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Let's avoid that. All right, uh, so then let's, um, let's move on. So we have, we can go into index.ts to then start like playing with the, with the client, okay? And uh, what, one thing we can quickly do is that we can check the balance that we have in one of our accounts, okay? So let's go to index.ts, which is here. We have the, the main function here. So we can get the, the client. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to connect to the network. So we need to always use the client.connect. And the also very important thing that we need to do is to client.disconnect. If we forget the disconnect, then the program will keep running. And uh... all right, so tell me when, uh, when you have this. Technically, if we run still npm start, we should still have the, oops, yeah, I'm not in the right package. Starter, let's clear that, npm start, it works. So we should have still the it works output. Any questions so far? Is everything okay? Yeah, tell me if you have any Questions, there, is no, there are no bad questions, so. So before we write the, the function itself, I wanted to also mention something about uh, the amount. The amount that you will mostly see, let me put it also in a, in a big screen, um, they, there is like a, mini, like a minimum amount unit in the XRP ledger that we call a drop. So most amounts that we will see in the functions will be written in drops. And one, what is a drop is that one XRP equals one million drop. So if you want to send 10 XRP, you will send 10 million drops. So we could write like a, a simple utils, for example, to convert uh, to, convert to the, like an XRP into a, into a drop, but also the XRPL.js library provides that. So that's something to keep in mind. We need to write most of the time the amounts in drop. That will not apply, for example, if we talk about issued tokens, which are basically not XRP. That way, uh, if we have a token ABC, if we write right one, that means we want to send one ABC token. Okay? And we have like, if you, you can go to xrpl.org to also read more about the amounts. There will be a lot of explanations there. Then that's where we create the payment transaction. So we need to go, let's go to the transactions uh, directory. And well, before doing that, I wanted also to mention that there are three steps 
And that, those steps will be repeated all the time when we want to create transactions to Ledger. The first one is to create the, the JSON object that will contain all the fields. For example, for a payment, we'll have destination, uh, originating account, etc. Second step it will be to sign that, uh, that transaction with our wallet that we created before. And the last one will be to submit to the ledger and wait for validation. And that, that, um, those steps will always repeat for any kind of transactions. And this is how it looks like. So for a payment, we have uh, the transaction type, and this will change for any kind of transaction we want, payment, uh, NF token, mint, etc. We have the account, that's the originating account, the destination, the amount, and you see here it's in drops, so that will be 10 XRP in that example. We have the fee, the fee which is also uh, in drops, so in, in that it's actually 0.000012 XRP. So it's a very, very cheap transaction. We have some flags, that's some things that we can see later, but basically that allows to enable or disable different options for a transaction. And the sequence. So every uh, transaction needs a sequence number to order them and to make sure that one doesn't go on top of the other. Here, also what I wanted to mention is that for all the transactions, there are some fields which are common to all the transactions, like for example, transaction type. Transaction type will be there all the time for account set, trust set, or any other transactions. But there are some which are very specific to the transaction itself, such as the destination or amount. Okay, if you want to create a, um, an NFT, I think there is no need of an amount. So, yeah. Can you explain more about the fees? Yeah, so basically, uh, the fees is like the, um, the, the amount of XRP which is required to validate a transaction inside the, the ledger. And again, so this fee is in drops, so if you want to have the real amount, you need to uh, divide by 1 million. So that would be 0.000012 XRP. So if you convert that into dollars, for example, that would be less than a cent, way less than a cent. So you need to provide those fees to the network to allow the transaction to be validated. So that's like, the, for example, the gas fees. If you take the Ethereum world, that's something similar. You can change that actually, you can pay more fee if you want. But that's typically um, what the ledger, what the network requires at this moment for the transaction to be validated. So we'll see a bit later, but the SDK will query the, the ledger and the ledger will return the fee needed for the validation to be, to be done. I've seen sometimes, rarely, like a fee of 15, so it doesn't make a big difference, but that can vary very, li very little. So again, with 10,000 XRP, if one payment costs 0 0.000012 XRP, you have a lot of payments to do. Yep. All right, so let's go now to, to the code and let's create the, the function that will allow us to send a payment. So let's go to the transactions directory. And we'll create a file called uh, payments, for example, payments.ts. All right. So we'll create this function, send payment. It's an arrow function. And we'll take, as well, the client. So to the, to the send payment, we'll, um, in, my, in my way, so we have two... Uh, parameters. So one will be all the fields, almost all the fields that are needed for a payment. In that case, so let's create a type that will help us. A type, let's say payment, payment props, and we have the XRPL library it gives us actually all the, the fields which are required by the payment, uh, the payment transaction. So let's import it. Okay, so we have that object here. If we look into the library, we'll see that it extends a base transaction. The base transaction is all, are all the fields that are 
uh, common to all the transactions, and you have those which are specific to, uh, to the payment one. So let's do, let's do that. But what I like to do, actually, is because we are sending a payment, we, I don't like to repeat that a transaction type is a payment. So what I can do, what we can do is use like a TypeScript um, tool to omit certain fields from the payment object. So in that case, that would be transaction type. And what I also like to do, and we'll, uh, I'll just show you later, is to avoid the account field because we'll use the wallet that we created earlier to um, specify the account address. Okay, so let's do props, payment props. Is everything okay with that so far? Do you have any questions? All good? Yep. And the next one, what I like to do as well, is to use the transaction options that I defined earlier, that I showed, that I explained in the models, and let's, let's go to this one right now. So transaction options, um, it's really like some options you want to, 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 to send to the application. One of them, I think the, the most important is the wallet, and this is the one we created again before. And the other you can pass, you can pass like, if you want to show some logs or anything you really want. Okay, so the wallet is the most important here. So let's, let's use that and we can extract the wallet from, from that type. And so, as I said before, you have like three steps to do. We have to prepare the transaction, JSON. We have then to sign, and we have to submit and wait for validation. Okay, all good here. So let's prepare the transactions. That, and by prepare, I mean let's define the fields which are required by the payment transaction. So because we're using TypeScript, we can use the, the payment type that xrpl.js provides us. And we can use so the props and we can define, I'm, I'm gonna go through it uh, very soon, but we're gonna define the transaction type and we're gonna define the account like this. So, is everyone familiar with spreading in JavaScript, TypeScript? All good? Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, props, is that I'm um, integrating in that object, the payment object, all the fields which are part of the payment props type that I define here. So that means, um, let's say what, again, what we have in, in there. So we can have destination tag, invoice ID, pass, and max, all those fields, I'm basically integrating them to the object. And that's way faster than writing them one by one. Okay, if you have like 50 properties, you don't want to write them all by one by one. So that's what the spreading means here. I'm including everything else. And because I omitted the transaction type and the account, I have to write them here just to specify it's a payment and uh, the originating account is the account from my wallet. So we avoid using that, I mean, defining transaction type when we call that send payment function. All good? So there are, the next thing is the, in the prepared transaction is that we need to add a few fields which are required by the ledger, but which are a little bit sort of difficult for us to get such as last ledger sequence, and I can explain you a bit later. So the XRPL.js library provides us a tool called autofill, which is also in XRPLPy. What we can do, let's uh, create a new transaction here. We'll call the client, and we have autofill. And we need to make that function async. So, this autofill function will query the ledger to get a few information from the ledger and add it to the payment uh, object. One of them, for example, I think is important is last ledger sequence. What that means is that if you go, let's go back to the explorer. You'll see we'll have here all the blocks coming. 
So we know that it takes three, four seconds for a ledger to be validated, okay? And let's say we submit our transaction here at 83. And we say the last ledger sequence needs to be 87. That means that if the ledger arrives at 88 or 89, it's sure that the transaction will not be validated and, for example, the payment will not go through. That allows us to avoid waiting for ages in case we don't specify it. That's like a security mechanism. Okay? Typically, I mean, it never happened to me, but it's good to include it. So typically, I think by default, it's uh, 10 seconds, what the autofill function uh, sets for you, 10 seconds. Uh, but you can also change that. Everything okay so far? All right. So next one is we need to sign that, uh, that transaction, right? Using uh, the private key of our, of our wallet. So let's create a signed constant and we'll use the client. Sorry, we'll use the wallet and we have a sign function here. Okay, very simple, wallet.sign, and you send the prepared transaction before with the autofill with all the fields. All right, if you send the original one, the payment one, there will be an error. The ledger will not accept it. And finally, once the transaction is signed, we can submit it to the ledger and wait for the validation to happen. So basically wait that we have this new block appearing. So for that, let's do, let's say, a response, and I can return the response later. So we have a submit or submit and wait function. So let's use the submit and wait because that function will automatically detect if the transaction is included into a ledger. Okay, otherwise we need to do this um, check manually. And the, so the, the sign functionality returns us an object with hash and transaction blob. So the transaction blob is the hexadecimal string that we need to submit to the ledger, which has been signed by, by our wallet. And here, so if we want to use that response in the future, we can just return the response. And that should be pretty it. That should be good. Let me know if... Uh, if you're still writing or if that's okay. I can actually console log the response so you can see how it looks like. And in the transactions directory, I usually like also to include like an index.ts file, which is like a, a barrel where you can export all the functions. So let's say we do an export everything from the payments directory. So that means that when we import it from the index.ts file, uh, we will just have an import from transactions and not from every file. All right, so now let's go back to the index.ts and we'll use, uh, let's say, that function. So we do an await because it's a, an asynchronous function. Send payment. And here we define the property um, of the payment that we, we, we want. So let's say, for example, the destination and the amount. And I'm going to include that as well. The wallet is the wallet one. So let's do destination. So here we created two wallets. Remember, you remember? That's why one is the sender, one is the receiver. So the destination here will be the wallet two dot address. And the amount, that will be, uh, let's say, 10 XRP. So we need to add six zero to send 10 XRP because again, that amount here is in drops. Okay, all right. Any question? Is everything okay? Yep, so now that's, uh, let's try to run that function and let's see, let's see if that works. So first what I want to do is uh, I want to open on the Explorer the account, like let's say the first account and we'll see the balance that should move. So we haven't sent anything yet, so we still have 10,000 XRP. But now I'm gonna run the send payment function by using npm start. And we should see 10 
XRP deducted from the account. Okay, so it seems it worked. As a result, so we have an object containing all the fields from the transaction and as well some other data that, allow, that tells us, for example, if the transaction is successful. And one of them is the test success here. So when you see that, you're sure that the transaction is validated and the balance has been changed between those two accounts. Let's go to the account again. Let's refresh the page. And we have 10 XRP which have been debited from the account. And if we go to the other one, we should have plus 10 XRP. And let me do the transaction again and let's see again how fast the, transac the transaction is. So we'll run NPM start. It's signing in the, bar in the background, it's submitting to the ledger. And after a few seconds, we'll have the, the transaction appearing. Here it is. So this is actually very simple to send a payment. That's a simple payment, okay, with very little fields. What you could do is you can um, like find a, another person in the room and send a payment to, to that person and try by yourself with your, your wallets. Do you, is, there, is everything okay so far? Do you have any, any questions? Were you able to submit a transaction? Can you just go back quickly to payment with the CS? The send payment function? Yes, please. Yeah? Do you want me to come and check, uh, check with you? How are you able to? Thank you. Yeah, so good. Did you try to run the, the script? Run in PMI before? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so thank you everyone for this uh, first session. I hope you really enjoyed it. I'm uh, glad that everyone managed to uh, send a payment on the XRP ledger. Congratulations, everyone. So I'm glad you went well. <laughs>